Hey guys, it's John with hookajohn.com here. I'm coming to you from the Tangiers Lounge in San Diego. Hi people. The voice that you just heard is actually the owner of Tangiers Tobacco. Uh, his name is Eric Hoffman and I asked him if we could have a couple words on camera and um, pass on uh, the information to you guys or the subject matter of that. So, Eric, thanks for letting me do this with you. Oh, no problem, no problem. Okay. Um, we'll start with some basic background. There's a lot of people that do know about Tangiers, and maybe a lot of people that uh, every day that are hearing about Tangiers that may not know what the heck is Tangiers. So, let me start out with some basic questions. Um, when was the first time that you smoked hookah? Oh, 1997 or so. Yeah, it's hard to tell. You know, I was in college. Fumari had been open for like, I don't know, like open for four months, and so on and so forth. So. Okay. Um, what did you smoke? I, I, obviously, Fumari tobacco. Any particular? No, no. Back then, all there was was Nakla. There was like, uh, you know, at the time, there was like five flavors of Nakla. You know, they had like uh, Bahraini, you know, apple, and whatnot. You know, the five basic flavors, not the apple, strawberry, apricot, mixed fruit. What made it, what was special about it that made you decide um, this is something that you may enjoy as a hobby? Well, I was smoking cigars at the time, so it was just kind of like something in addition to cigars. Okay. From and then it replaced cigars. <laughs> just as social smoke, or personal smoking, basically? Oh, wait, we don't, right, can we, can we say social smoke on camera? I'm just curious, because that's a competitor. <laughs> We, we said Fumari, actually, so I guess that... <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. We can say we say whatever we want here. This is Hookah John. I don't care. <laughs> Anyways. Um, it, yeah, it was just, you know, me and my friends would go out and we'd play backgammon, you know, um, cards, things like that. Okay. Um, say that was 97, 98, whatever. At what point did you decide, hey, I, can, I should make hookah tobacco myself? Well, you know, I guess after, after I finished college, I would do... Moved around, did a couple of this and that, this couple of jobs, you know, you know, DuPont Pharmaceuticals, General Atomics, a couple other places. You know, I just wasn't really feeling anything like that. And uh, I talked to the owners of Fumari, and they were they were interested in getting the uh, getting something uh, about you know getting new tobacco in there because at the time there was very very few brands of tobacco on the U.S. market. You know, there was. There was not Nakla, and at the time there was like Abu Haitham. Uh -huh. And, you know, they looked at bringing in, uh, importing other stuff, and nothing really appealed to them in terms of price and so, you know, whatever. Uh, and there was still, Fak Fakina was still, you know, a separate company, too, as I think about it. Well, at that time, did Fumari have their own line of hookah tobacco? No, they were just in bringing in other stuff. They were just a lounge, yeah, yeah hookah, general hookah lounge. Okay. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, the other flavor of Nakla that I forgot was Zagwu. It was the other of one of the six choices you had. Zagwu, yeah, <laughs> the heavy black stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so then you decided at one point, what made you decide you want to make your own? Fumari, uh, you're talking about, uh, you're tossing ideas with them, but obviously you're on your own. You're not associated with them in any way. Well, originally, you know, it's their their, their interest was seeing uh, seeing if it was something I could do. They were talking to other people about doing the same thing, and so I, you know, whipped out an engineering analysis and figured out how to accomplish the the production of it, and and, uh, and then I came to them and said, well, okay, here's what it takes, and we didn't really come to any, you know, solid understanding in terms of what we were each trying to accomplish by, you know the business, so, you know, I decided it would be, it would be much better to, uh, get the, uh, you know, to go out on my own and do it, do it myself. Okay. Um, okay, well, you did already hint on this, but I was going to ask you, what qualified you? What made you think that you were qualified to make hookah tobacco? Mm, well, you know, as, I, I mean, I, I guess, I guess in any sense, you know, I, I don't know that anybody, you know, before they set out doing something new, you know, you either have confidence that you're going to be able to do something, um, and, you know, you have some sort of, you know, skills or knowledge that, uh, or education that would indicate that, you know, you have some proficiency in things like that. You know, and, you know, you, you, who knows, man? I mean, you know, you might decide you want to be, uh, you know, maybe you decide you want to go out and be a concert pianist, you know? I mean, how do you know you're going to be a concert pianist? 
You know what I'm saying? You know, how do you know you're going to be a great painter? I mean, you don't know. All you do is you go out and you play piano or, you know, you paint pictures. And, and you know, if you're successful at it, you're successful at it. And if you're not, you're not. You know, it's it's one of those breaks in life, unfortunately. Good. All right. What's so different and unique about Tangiers? Now, I already know the answer. I'm very familiar with the product, and many people watching probably are. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of people who don't know. Yeah, you know, I guess, I, I, you know, I, I, I guess... I guess I'd say I'd make two points, and I guess it's probably not the information you're looking for. I guess it's more kind of like a personal opinion. I like to think that Tangiers is more than the sum of its parts. I mean, in terms of, you know, people and how they regard the product, you know, it makes the product larger than what it is. It takes up more philosophical space than some other brand. I know that sounds faggoty or something. I don't know. <laughs> Can, can we re edit that part out? That's oh, funny. Sure. <laughs> it sounds kind of it sounds kind of silly, but uh, and then the other thing is is that you know we take care and concern and make sure that you know what we're producing is of quality that's you know what I think is sufficient for myself and for the customers, and you know which to me I think is a lot better than other brands out there, and you know we take care you know take a lot of care in making sure what we're making is worthwhile and we're not to and that wasn't directed at Starbucks at all it was, okay. it said worthwhile so I mean I didn't want people to think that was a chavit alright I'll explain to you I don't think anyone got that I got that <laughs> I got that as the, uh, the the esteemed president of Starbucks he's a fine individual who's name I say hi to him wow and yeah. when he said worthwhile so, uh, yeah. and I say uh, yes so uh, I say hello to you sir I, uh, I certainly I want to stop by one of these days. I keep promising I will. I will one of these days. I, pr I do say so. But anyways, yeah, I, I guess basically the, uh, I guess the second, like I said, you know, we try to make some sort of effort at getting, you know, crummy flavors and get rid of them. You know, uh, we don't want them hanging around too long. So, uh, you know, we just discontinue another flavor. <clears throat> Well, if I may, you're, you're kind of being a little vague in the sense that, okay, how you're being specific. You said how, how is Tangier Speci different? Special. Special, yeah, special, different. Yeah. How about physically different? Oh, you mean, in, 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 that's why I said I don't think my answer is going to be what you want. <laughs> I was talking about how Tangiers is different than other companies, I guess. but Not companies, I meant, I'm sorry, I meant the hookah tobacco itself. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's made of molasses or some other sweetener. And uh, they don't think brands generally use, I mean, they only use glycerin. So it's just some mixture of glycerin and water and tobacco and artificial coloring. And we're actually, you know, making it more, what I think is more of a traditional, um, more of a traditional way. And that's, that would be my thought process. Okay. Um... You said you wanted this interesting, right? Is this interesting? Or is this I, more? I don't know if it's interesting. I'm, this is more <laughs> an introduction, maybe the first time. We can do several, like every six months, we can discuss stuff. I always have questions that I want to uh, ask Eric. I always forget them that are interesting. I like to, we can go off topic in a little bit, off hookah topic, because uh, we've covered it um, a little bit. There's, uh, It's interesting, in here, I'm in the lounge right now, and he's got some handwritten signs that are pretty... Um, Interesting. That's Some, off topic. That's off topic, right? <laughs> you mean topic we don't want to discuss? No, I don't care. Yeah, he's got like a, a no tipping sign. A no tipping sign. That's important. Um, no, no hookahs on tables. But one that I find is very interesting, especially since he put a sign above the sign that says, very important, read this sign. <laughs> I should inform you photography and or recording devices prohibited without written permission by Tangier's management. Well, obviously this is, um, I do have permission. It's implied, not written. Correct. Um, I'll write it out for you later. And then, <laughs> and then, I was wondering your thought. I've discussed this with you in the past. Well, there's actually a funny thing about that sign that says "Very important, read this sign." That actually used to be a series of three signs, and it's the only one that somehow survived. Um, I don't know why. It's it used to say "Very important, read this sign," and then the sign below it said, "Johnny Badlands says there's a new sign below this sign," and then the third sign said, "No forks in the small sink," because at the old place we had two sinks, and sometimes people would drop forks from making bowls, because we use oyster forks to pack bowls, right. and they drop the, in the, uh, the small sink, which had like a water purifier attached to it, and it was like, and they kept doing it, so it was like, this is annoying, 
and I put up a sign that said, don't put forks in the small sink, and everybody ignored it. So I just like put up a series of three well, sides. <laughs> something that's uh, funny that you bring up the oyster fork. Um, <clears throat> oyster forks have become popular, I think, because of Tangiers. I saw another YouTube reviewer. Well, who's I don't eating want... oysters? I mean, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you eat anything else with them? We can have a really small piece of cake. <laughs> or very small uh, Well, actually, I eat donuts. I eat my donuts with an oyster fork and a very, very small knife. I like it. Does it make it last longer? No, no I, I just like to eat donuts with a knife and fork. I know it sounds weird, but mm -hmm. I, I just, you know, especially ones with powdered sugar, I kind of find powdered sugar creepy. <laughs> All right. We can go on about that. Have but you ever seen powdered sugar on somebody's face? It looks, there's something wrong there. It's, it's disconcerting. All around his mouth and stuff? Yeah, well, I mean, just in Sometimes general. You know, you got someone who wants a beard, you know, like your... It makes you look like you're old, or you get some on your shirt. I mean, who wants powdered sugar everywhere? It's creepy. So I saw this uh, YouTube reviewer um, packing Tangier, showing us how he packs his Tangiers, whether he's right or wrong or different or whatever. Yeah. He, he mocked at people using oyster forks. He yeah. goes, you don't, use your fingers, people. Don't, I see these people using oyster forks. He yeah. kind of uh, threw a jab at people using oyster forks, which I thought was funny because so many people do now, but it makes sense. You can pack tangiers with your fingers, Oh, right? sure, sure, sure. Right. I, I just like to do it because, you know, because we use the same tubs of tobacco for a lot of people, and I don't really, I mean, there's, I, I know a number of our really good friends out there, um, they're probably... Uh, they're probably, uh... Can I answer this? Go ahead. I'll talk. So, uh, Eric's going to hey, be Martin. taking a phone call right now, and I'm just going to kill some time. Um, there's so much that we can touch upon here That's that okay. I'd like to. However, um, not all thoughts are going to come to my head. None of this is scripted, except for a couple of general questions. Um, if he's not off soon, oh, I, like it. I may okay. stop it. But let's see if he wraps it up. No, no, it's perfect. What do you guys think of my uh, new beard today? Just got this done. I got a really okay. good uh, stylist that does my facial hair once in a while and does my haircut. Pretty snazzy, eh? Okay, that sounds fine. If anyone, I don't know when I'm going to upload this, but today is Sunday, the day before uh, the Tobacco Plus Expo starts in Las Vegas, which uh, I'll be holding a booth there. Yeah, no, I have and, a lot of uh, um, arrangements for the see tomorrow evening. So Eric I'll is actually that. visiting yeah. that too. Yeah, I wonder where the microphone is on this. Yeah, I'll pick it up sometime during the day. That'll be fine. Hoping the audio quality is pretty good on this. Okay, Mr. Sad. Hopefully, we can wrap up. Yeah, just yeah. A second here. I'll call you when I get. I'll call you when mm. I get back. That's right. Uh huh. Okay, bye. Okay, so um, other brands, your thoughts on other brands, anyone specific or general? What do you think of who could tobacco in the U.S. other than Tangiers? Uh, you know, there's some really, really great brands out there, and, you know, uh, I've, already, I've already kind of, you know, thrown a few names in there, like, you know, Starbuzz and Fumari, those are really good brands. And, you know, I hear a lot of great things about Social Smoke. I've never really gotten the opportunity to take a look at it, but, you know, I hear some great things about it. And, you know, Al Fokker is, and Nakla, of course, you know, those are both very, very good brands. And, you know, there's some significantly lower quality brands in the market. And, you know, you can call them hookah tobacco if you want. And, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to say that, you know, every brand is inferior to Tangiers because that's ridiculous. I mean, you can't take a you know, brand like Starbuzz or Alfacher and then look at Tangiers and say, well, obviously Tangiers is the best. It's, that's just ridiculous. I mean, you have to acknowledge what they've accomplished in terms of their brand, in terms of, you know, the, you know, the hookah tobacco industry in the U.S. And I don't know. That's that's just my opinion. You know, you ask anybody else in the industry, and I'm sure they'll tell you that their brand of tobacco is the best. And I kind of laugh at that. It's it's kind of funny. I mean, if Tangiers isn't something you want to smoke, then so be it. You know, move sure. on with your life, and I'll uh, I'll try to overcome the heartbreak. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What else can we talk about? Um, so okay, here's something interesting to me. Why don't you like to be uh, photographed? I wanted. I want a picture with you on the forum now. I have this thread where I have people that visit me at my uh, warehouse. Yeah. And I like to take. I've made it a point now. I want to take pictures of uh, Royal Hookah Forum members or, or any customer, Hookah John customer. Take a picture and put it up on my uh, forum, um, and just to have. How about you? 
I don't know, man. I, I, I guess I guess it goes along with the powdered sugar comment. Yeah. <laughs> it's I don't know. Uh, I've I've often felt like photography is creepy. You know, it's like uh, it's like capturing ghosts and chaining them to the you know chaining them to the real world. I guess. You know, people, I mean, you can look at a picture of somebody that's been, you know, that's been dead for 100 or 150 years, and that's, uh, that's, you know, I, I guess I don't want to fall into that category. I know, that sounds uh, kind of metaphysical maybe, but... I feel the opposite. Um, I think pictures are good, you know, just as maybe most people do. Um, but when you know somebody, and say this is, uh, this is going way off topic, I have children... Now, the child that I have that's, say, two years old, they're all older now, um, that two-year-old is no longer, when that person turns, say, eight years old, that two-year-old is gone forever. Mm. I mean, they're just not the same person. Right. They've right. evolved into something else, somebody you else. You should be taking the time to remember them as they are, and at that moment. And because True. every time you take a photograph, you, you've missed a moment that you could have captured forever. Every time I take a bathroom break, I've missed an opportunity. <laughs> I could have kept forever. But the pictures, I, I save it all. <laughs> the pictures, you know, you know, they do. Uh, you and I are, you know, are getting up there in age. It'd be nice. Uh, I hope we're doing business and friends and acquaintances for many years to come. Yeah. It'd be nice to see what we looked like ten years ago. I've already been working with you about five years now. I don't want to think about what I looked like ten years ago to remind me of how I looked now. <laughs> All right. So, as you guys can tell, Eric is a very interesting individual. And if you haven't met him in person, you may not understand. If you have met him in person, you still may not understand. Um, so I suggest you come down, try Tangiers. Um, there's a lot of talk about it on the forum. I'm at 17 minutes now. I'd like to do this again. Um, I'd like you... Why don't you just stop this one, and then we'll do a second one right away. That'd yeah. probably be good. Yeah. Okay, Fine. sure. We'll do a part two. Yeah. All right, good. ladies and gentlemen, I will be back in another video. All right, here we are with another session of uh, Who John? Uh, rambling with Eric Hoffman of Tangiers. Yeah, we need to come up with some subject matter. And... Um, all right, Eric, anything you want to say? Anything you want to discuss? Hookah I, or non-hookah? I'm glad Mountain Dew is doing uh, Back to Sugar. I like it. I don't yeah. like the corn syrup at all. That corn syrup <laughs> before? Oh, real sugar. I'm checking it yeah, out right now. Right. Let me see. Mind if I touch your Oh, drink? yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, it says Back to Real Sugar. Yeah. Now, on my screen, because I'm using self-recording, it is showing it as backwards. We'll see if it records it. And, uh, whatever. People get the point. Yeah, yeah. No, we drink, uh, I like to drink the Mexican Coke, too. That's got the sugar instead of the corn syrup. Yeah, I was telling people about that. I have friends uh, in the San Diego area. And What do you do, get that at Costco in Tijuana? <laughs> no, or no. I do they really it. sell it here in the U.S.? Oh, yeah, they sell it here in the U.S. It's, do they call it Mexican Coke? Uh, no, they just call it Coke, but it's, they, they well, I mean, like the rest, restaurant wholesaler, if they advertise it, they'll say Mexican Coke, yeah. Is it made in Mexico? Or oh, yeah. Or just the yeah. formula that... Then, yeah, and the whole... The whole uh, the bottles are all in Spanish and whatnot. Do you recycle those bottles? Because they come in the old Coke bottle, Coke bottle, yeah. right? No, they're not returnable. Um, I don't know why they stopped. I thought that was the greatest thing when I was a kid is you take, you know, you take a six-pack back of bottles, uh, six-pack of bottles back to the store and you just trade them in for when you buy a new six-pack of soda or you get your money back. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was fantastic. And, and I, I mean, you know, we did a lot, you know, people talk about recycling now, but people did a lot more to recycle back then than they do now. I don't know what the hell happened between then and now. It probably got too costly to recycle. Yeah, because, I mean, we, re re we reuse as many things as we possibly can. I mean, it's we don't have to, but, you know, it's not a question of keeping costs down. I mean, it does help that, but, you know, it's just a question of, you know, it's like we use, like, old flyers that somebody, you know, wrote the wrong name on or they had, like, a they ran into something or ran off the edge or whatever. So we just reuse them for scratch paper. You know, we use cloth towels instead of paper towels whenever possible. You know, things like that. Um, I'm not really... I'd like to think I'm an environmentally thoughtful person, but I don't do it because of the environmental aspect of it. I just do it because it's a, it's the right thing to do, okay. I think. <clears throat> what are your thoughts on awkward silences? I'm sorry, was that a real question? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, 
At gun control. Gun control. Uh, you know, it's funny. The uh, you know, we go through periods where you know, uh, you know, gun control people are you know winded you know for current events or whatever. People are people are talking about gun control and this and that. You know, really, I, I don't think. I mean, aside if you you know, unless you like to go out and hunt for deer, or rabbits, or something. I mean, there's really no point in owning a gun, uh, with the with the exception of you know what probably the framers of the Constitution intended was you know to protect the American people and their freedoms from people that wanted to come in, whether it's you know a government that's decided to turn into you know police state or a fascist government, or you know invasion from a foreign power. You know, the Japanese were. And Japanese, you know, leaders were interviewed after World War II, and they said, well, instead of bombing Pearl Harbor, why don't you invade the United States? And they said, are you crazy? Everybody there has a gun. We would have, we would have made it 20 feet. You know, that's, that's probably the main reason that guns should be legal. Um, and, I mean, yeah, it's probably not, with nuclear, you know, weapons protecting us, it's probably not that important, but it does protect us from, you know, if the wrong people took control of the government and tried to do it from internally. I mean, we can't really drop nuclear bombs on ourselves. <laughs> it sounds kind of stupid. What are your thoughts on the new Tangiers uh, Barley line? The Burley? Burley. 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 Uh, it's not really a new line. It, it was. It's kind of a. It's kind of a testing thing. Um, you know, because we're always looking at coming out with. You know, we have to periodically change formulations of tobacco because crop years change, the tobacco that's in the tobacco changes, um, you know, because they make, you know, these are blended tobaccos. So the blends of tobaccos change, and we have to, you know, periodically get the tobacco, you know, with about the amount of nicotine we want, you know, and about the flavor we want. You know, we have to sometimes do a lot of work to make sure that it's up to the standards that I think that my customers deserve. Okay, uh, Tangiers has a numbering system for flavors. What are you going to do when you run out of numbers to use? <laughs> I don't know, start adding letters. <laughs> I don't know. I really, uh, I haven't thought that far ahead. I mean, we have, I mean, the, the system right now accommodates 200 numbers, mm -hmm. um, 200 different, you know, 200 different flavor formulas, and uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see that, that we're in, in any danger quite yet. Mm. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, lucid. Do you smoke lucid yourself personally? What's lucid? Out of preference. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> no, I. Uh, I'm a big fan of lucid. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, hmm. I, uh, right now I'm smoking this. Uh, the Burley line has more nicotine in them. Right now I'm smoking like half Burley, half regular Nor. And, uh,. Yeah, I, I think that's the opposite direction from like going towards lucid. I only I do smoke lucid, you know, when it comes to developing new flavors and whatever, and uh, you know it's it's good, it's good, it's, it's enjoyable. And I mean, it's you know, it's it's certainly it earned my respect, but you know, on a day to day basis, it's not something I I go out of you know go out and smoke. Is it true that you made the lucid line only for women? <laughs> no, that's false. Um, I've known some guys that probably you know. Uh, well, <laughs> they're perfect for lucid. Let's just put it that way. That was a uh, uh, like like me. Although I have been smoking more um, original line flavors. Well, with a haircut more. like that, I'm not sure, so sure that. Uh... <laughs> um, what are you saying? That I would I wouldn't be a barley man by for sure. Burley, burley. burley man. Yeah. I'm burley the scotch man. has barley. The uh, tobacco is burley. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, what do you want to discuss right now? Oh, I don't know. Um, scotch is good. I mean, you can talk about more tobacco-related matters. Nicotine content, uh, hmm. I don't know. Okay, Charcoal. I'll... Charcoal. Let's discuss uh, cigarettes versus hookah tobacco. I am of the opinion that uh, cigarettes are killers because not of the nicotine or the tobacco, but they, there's some quotes out there that say cigarettes have 400 different chemicals in it. Why they would want to do that, is that true? I'm sure apple pie has 400 different chemicals in it, too. How many chemicals are in hookah tobacco? <laughs> Who knows? I mean, there's, it's, it, there's, there's going to be a, a laundry list of stuff that you're going to find in anything. Um, it, it's, it's just, it goes with the complexity of life. I mean, the, you know, tobacco or tobacco or apples or 
you know, milk or anything like that. It's one's part of, you know, the living world. And in a lot of ways, it's still part of the living world. And, you know, the living world is characterized by complexity. You can't just suddenly, oh, well, that's... <laughs> It's, it's, uh, you, well, you, why do you th do you think that cigarette smoking is more dangerous than uh, smoking? I don't know. It's it's tough to say. I mean, there's a lot of scientific this and that's out there. Um, I think probably, and this is just you know from a guy who's you know not a medical doctor, just you know a chemist, and an engineer, and whatnot. Uh, my guess is is that it's. It's, it's probably, it has different risks than cigarette smoking. I think that you're probably at an increased risk for heart disease, more so over than cigarettes, um, but your chance of lung cancer may be lower. Uh, it's, it's, I think most of the, the, you know, the harm that comes from this is actually mostly from the, the charcoal in it. Sure. If you're using you know, lower quality charcoal, like coconut coals, sorry John, just kidding. The uh, uh, <laughs> no, uh, yeah. There's probably you know the coconut coals, are, yeah. especially chronic hookah coconut coals, made from the best materials, the best, the best coconut husks that uh, that they can throw away. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, what what are you using? You're using this is Eric's uh, brand of choice. Well, that's this uh, what we're doing right now. That's the uh, the canary canary brands. They're right. nice people over there. Sure. Uh, golden charcoal. We also use Fumari go um, Japanese charcoal. Um, you know, it depends on what's going on. But right now we're using canaries. All right. I think the reason, from what I've heard, you like them because of, mainly because of the lower heat output. Yeah, and they're flatter. I mean, coconut coals, I mean, since they're like a cube, I mean, the top half, I mean, most of that heat's just radiating upwards. It's really not going to, a lot of it's not being transmitted down to the bowl. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, basically, if you cut them all in half, I mean, you'd be getting twice the use out of them. Have you tried this new product called the Kalud Lotus? Have you heard about what it is? It's uh, We haven't discussed this before, but it's like an apparatus that you put over your bowl instead of foil. Uh -huh. It's a metal uh, contraption that's closed. It's like, you know, your old Weber barbecues where you have this vent on top? Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, so it has that on top, and you put your coal in it, and you put the cover on it, and you can, oh, yeah, you you can open like and a, close it. Yeah, I know But it's ones. all metal at the bottom. Uh -huh. And I actually tried it, and I was impressed. I thought it was a gimmick. It is retailing for 50 bucks. So you put, it, basically it's like one of those bowls where it had like the, the mason jar clamp on it, and it had a lid and a screen. There are no holes in the bottom of this. Uh, it's flat metal. It does have these beads on the bottom of it um, to give it like a so texture. So it's, 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 it's filtering out the vapors from the charcoal and just taking the heat, transmitting it through the metal, and then it's, divert, it's bringing air in from radially around from the outer edges. So that you're not getting fumes from the charcoal? Possibly. There's no air going to the tobacco. Just well, how do you heat. Suck like air, you put, well, how do you suck air through I, the I don't know, but it works. Um, <laughs> and I only use it. One guy came to the place and he gave me a demonstration. And I'm going to be um, trying it out more this week at mm. the uh, tobacco show we're all going to. And mm. uh, I plan on carrying it. But you should try it out. Um, the guy who brought it by tried it with Starbucks. And when we went back to try a bowl with Coles after he left and he took it with him... I was like, wow, I, I really, really like that product. Um, we have to try it with Tangiers. So you put like three coals in it, three coconut coals, mm -hmm. all right? And um, if it gets harsh, they say you can open it and let some of the heat out. Um, that doesn't sound likely, but go ahead. And it does have these slits around the side for air so that you, you're never airtight in it. But again, there's no um, there are no holes in the surface of the tobacco. But you bring up a good point. They say it works very well with uh, Tangier funnel bowls. Mm -hmm. I'll bring that by one day. Well, that's interesting. It yeah, it must be drawing air in from one direction and just using the charcoal to heat from the top because it, it has to be getting air to the charcoal, otherwise the charcoal would go out. Mm -hmm. so no well, there are, there are, like I said, there's slits around the side of it for the yeah. air to go out. Um, it's also a $50 contraption. Um, so, I don't know how people would take to it. I was surprised. I liked it. I don't know if I would pay $50 as a consumer for it. I don't know. We'll see. They want quite a bit of money for wholesale on it. Quite a bit. Well, you know, you can't really put a price... I mean, 
if it's, you know, if you're going to be getting less chemicals from the charcoal, I mean, that's a pretty good deal to me. Yeah? yeah. Why not? We'll try that out. Um, what else can we discuss here? Nothing hippie tobacco related? What's your uh, favorite uh, line of clothing? <laughs> he didn't like that one. Eric's a, a very simple man. Yeah. He doesn't, Tangiers doesn't make enough money for him to buy Gucci and Louis Vuitton. Hey, 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 I have a 97 GMC pickup. That's pretty fancy, okay? All right. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> I don't drive my 85 Ranger around too much anymore. <laughs> what year is the truck? It's a 97. Well, mine's 97. 97 yeah. okay, how many miles you got on it? Probably about 125,000. That's it? I don't yeah. drive around. You're not a car guy either? Oh, uh, cars are okay. Or are you just in a 97? Better they're better than uh, MC pickups. Driving to, you no, know, walking to, you know, in Las Vegas, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> You're you're actually going to be a high roller in Vegas, from what I, you've told me. High roller. Yeah. Uh, I don't uh, I don't really take gambling too much, unfortunately. Getting a fancy schmancy suite, and um, renting a nice car. Well, you know, you're going to rent a car. You might as well rent a car because I'm going to be carrying a lot of stuff up there because there's people I've got to drop stuff off to in Vegas. So. Oh, good. It's either that or an SUV. I don't know. Driving around in an SUV. I always drive around in a pickup truck. I kind of want to drive around in a car for a change. Okay. <laughs> you should. You should. I agree with that. Don't yeah. Don't be hesitant. Don't be... Uh, whatever. As far as the suite goes... If, if you guys happen to be in Vegas uh, this week, uh, feel free to stop by. Uh, we're up at the Riviera, and uh, we'll probably be smoking hookah during the night. And, you know, a couple of cocktails, this and that, drinks, you know, whatever. Okay, that means I'm going to have to get this video up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, put it up Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Friday, yeah. Everyone's invited. <laughs> Everyone's invited. Oh, that was yesterday. Sorry about that. I'm smoking this new flavor that you have, which is absinthe. I've never tasted absinthe, so I don't know if it's accurate. Oh, I know some people that drink a lot of absinthe. They're quite the fans, and they say it's pretty close. It does have another flavor in it besides uh, mint, so I don't know what absinthe tastes like. I don't know if it's or absinthe tastes like. Kind of has that uh, otter kind of flavor to it. Yeah, it does. Kind of like I always wanted someone to make a hot out flavor yeah. tobacco. Well, and great it for is. licorice isn't too, too difficult. And Ada, you can't really taste grape. Well, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. But you can taste the uh, anise seed, yeah. or whatever it's called. Yeah. Well, we've gone 15 minutes. We can stop and maybe come up with more material, unless there's anything you'd like to bring up. No, no, no. Everything's, uh, everything's going fine. Uh Anything new and exciting? Anything you want to tell the boys and girls at home? Well, since the last time you made a video, I got married. That's the only thing that's interesting. That's right. And it's been a couple of years, right? Yeah. Have you hit the two-year mark? No, two years this March. March 26th. Oh, good. It's right around the corner. Congratulations. Things are going wife, uh, well. I know his wife. She's a lovely lady. Yeah, the, well, after after meeting your wife several times, I said, man, I'm, I'm you know, mm -hmm. this, this single thing is this, this terrible. And John's wife is just... First off, she's elegant. I mean, she's like elegant and beautiful. Thank you. And then, <laughs> Thanks. And then, uh, and then she's like, uh, she's like such a great, great cook. It's, it's amazing. I was like, I'm really, I, I really have been missing out something here. So. Yeah, yeah. There's something to be said about that. Definitely. What about kids? Any kids uh, planned for the future? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna uh, come by your house and take a couple of years. They're pretty good kids. So. <laughs> <laughs> they are good kids. Yeah, they're good kids. But you want them when they're fresh and young, so you can mold them the way my kids are well, spoiled now. Well, I was kind of young. Yeah, yeah. No, I was kind of excited because last year they, uh, well, I, I, I have problem like reading things, you know, like advertisements and commercials and things like that. And we were kind of excited because we were at, uh, we were up in L.A. visiting uh, a competing retailer, and uh, and we saw a billboard. It said, uh, uh, you know, Wild An San Diego Wild Animal Park kids free in October, and we're like, damn, we have to go over there a couple times and get a couple of kids. Yeah, pick up some <laughs> kids. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> that's the level of humor we operate around here. That's, that's pretty stupid. Right. <laughs> that's good. I hope you uh, you guys have kids. They're wonderful, and uh, I'd like to see some heirs to the Tangiers dynasty. Oh, I never day. believe in putting on heirs. I never have. I'm not that sort of person. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See what I did there? That was cute. That one actually went over my head. You know, like putting on airs, like being snoo snooty. Uh, no, I don't know that definition of airs uh, or airs in that context. You're too white. That's the problem. Hmm. White man's evil. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. <laughs> Your thoughts on the white man? Uh, I decline to comment this time. <laughs> um, hmm. Your thoughts on men in general? Uh, <laughs> the, uh, with women, they're the best game going in town. All right. Um, all right. Well, we could ramble on more, but we'll come back with some more content, hopefully in the near future. Right. Let's see if we're getting a little dry here, but dry. that's all right. Oh, hey. this is uncomfortable. In the past two videos I did with you, you would do an accent just without planning. You come up with those accents. Do you remember those? People ask me if that is your real accent on the Tangiers uh, packing a funnel bowl by the owner himself. This is the only, the, well, no, with, with the exception of the, when you tried those new flavors that time. This is only the second video I've ever done with you. I've never done a bowl packing video with you. All right, I'm going <laughs> to check my record. <laughs> I'll have to check my record. I'm denying any involvement in this project. My uh, <laughs> highest viewed This interview video. is over. <laughs> With that uh, CB note, we will be out. See you guys. <clears throat> and here we are, back at the Tangiers Lounge with Eric Hoffman. With and part two. Part two, yeah. <laughs> part 2.1. <laughs> part two didn't go so good because we were just discussing uh, maybe life in general. Or Gun aspects. control and having sex with Howard Stern or something like that, I don't remember. Something like that. So <laughs> we'll get on a maybe interesting who could questions, who could tobacco questions. All right, what's so interesting? This is tough for me because I feel like I know a lot of these questions. So um, Not everybody out there knows all the stuff you're talking about. All right, well, with a lot of brands, um, you pack your, your tobacco loosely. They fluff it in. They sprinkle it in. They well, put, I, know that I, I, I don't know that I even actually <coughs> recommend that as being a reasonable way of doing it. See, I've been trying that lately, and I've even done it. I've done a video packing Nakula Tangier style, and lately I've been trying a little bit more Starbuzz, and one of the times I said I'm going to pack it exactly like Tangier's, yeah. and it just didn't work. Which it one, Nakula or Starbuzz? No, Starbuzz. Yeah, it, but the Nakula works good that way? I can't re It did at the time. That's like a two or three year old video, Yeah. Um, and I haven't done it lately. I don't think I've smoked Nakula too much. Um, what I've been doing actually, off topic, is just using an Egyptian bowl and making it like a donut shape in there and making it, you know, an invisible funnel. Um, but I never pack anything as much as I pack Tangiers, or in the Tangier style of packing, which most people sh should know by now, it's, you pack a lot in, um... Well, do... that's, 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 dis that's deceptive. And the thing is, is that most of the brands out there have a really high water content, so they have a very high density. If you take a two, 250 gram package of Tangiers and you put it next to a 250 gram package of, you know, most brands, you, the Tangiers takes up a lot more space because right. it has a much lower density. So the thing is, is that when people put, you know, a certain amount of, you know, any of the really good brands of, you know, non molasses tobacco like, like Starbuzz or Alfacker. <coughs> The thing is, is that if they put the same, the same amount of tangiers in there, they're putting less tangiers in there in terms of the quant, the mass, you know, how much it weighs, because it's less dense. Mm -hmm. So if you take two volumes of things, something's less dense, it'll weigh less. So you have to kind of compensate. And I see. It gets to the point where it's, it's, it's it has such a low density that you really got to kind of jam it in there to get it, you know, get a good amount. Of it. See, I've um, the way I, I'll do other types of. Modern tobaccos, let's say. I'll pack it in loosely lightly and do pin pick, pin prick sized holes in it. Oh, yeah, no. Those small it, holes are never the way to go, ever. But it works. It works. Well, see, you, what you do is you use larger holes, but you're going to use less charcoal. So the thing is, is when, when people are, you know, people are like, oh, well, I use really small holes. Well, the thing is, is that <clears throat> you're now going to be drawing less air through the bowl. You're going to be dress, drawing less air through the ch across the charcoal. <clears throat> so you're going to be heating up the charcoal less. So you're going to have to use more charcoal. 
to compensate. But when you're fluffing it in there, there is some airflow, extra airflow going. It's not like a solid. How would that work? With a funnel bowl? Yeah, I don't know. It works. It works. It's, it, it really isn't. It's you're you're going to be using too much charcoal. And you're going to be using more charcoal than you need to, and then you're also going to be using. <coughs> well, I mean, you know, when you're not, you know, when you're not hitting it, and it's just sitting there. Now you have more charcoal sitting in the bowl, and it's going to be, you know, uh, going out faster. I mean, I've converted some people over from this. And, you know, whereas before they'd get, like, an hour or two hours, you know, out of a small bowl, you know, out of the, you know, after I, you know, have them start poking, poking more larger holes and using less charcoal, they're getting three or four hours out of each, each bowl. We'll see. What do you think about packing Tangiers and that's that every, way? And that's, every, and that's every brand. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is with Tangiers is if you, if you don't put as much in, you're not going to be able to build up enough heat because Tangiers does operate at a higher temperature because of that lack of water. So instead of, you know, operating around 225 degrees or so, it's operating close to 300 or 350 degrees. So to develop that heat, you need to have smaller air gaps. I'm confused um, because you prefer and recommend lower heat output charcoals. Yes. And you're saying that Tangiers well, operates at a higher... Well, yes, but um, you have to understand that water requires a lot of energy to boil. Whereas these things, you know, the like glycerin and the other types of oils, they require less... They require, uh, they require less heat to boil. But they do... They do... Uh, they do require um, heat to boil, but they require less heat than does water. Which that you you know it's like you give you you take back three but you have to give back two because you know you have to make it at a higher temperature you don't run at a higher temperature but at the same time uh, but at the same time you know you're not it doesn't take as much energy to boil stuff so you're coming out ahead and Tangiers uses less heat than do other brands okay um, all right more information than maybe a lot of people have. We'll see how they respond to that. Um, you want to wrap it up now? You want to continue? No, no, no. Just keep talking. Just keep talking. All right. <laughs> We're going to try to stay... I have four straws. I'm not afraid to use them. <laughs> I get these straws. I took them away from us. Um, <laughs> what are some of your thoughts on other brands? Well, I think we discussed that. Yeah, in the first that. video. Okay, how about uh, the hookah industry? Hookah tobacco... Uh, sorry, hookah pipes... Uh, hookah charcoal, hookah accessories. What, oh, you, what you see out there? Yeah, I mean that could take a while to answer. Uh, well, golly, uh, hookah charcoal. I mean, the good to me, the good brands of charcoal are the same brands of charcoal that have always been good brands of charcoal, and the brands of charcoal that nobody uses. So don't use them, please. So they'll, they'll probably screw them up too. <laughs> and likewise for hoses, uh, you know, leather hoses. Who uses a leather hose? Everybody uses crummy plastic hoses, or uh, they'll use like uh, washable hoses and whatever. Leather hoses are still great quality. <clears throat> the prices of them are relatively stable. I mean, basically, whatever everybody in the market goes out and you know buys in mass, then they get all cheap and it goes to, it goes to hell fast. Right. You know. What about uh, the difference in ceramics used for? Um, the Tangiers funnel bowls versus the ceramics that are coming out of China. Well, the, the thing is, with the ceramics from China, they press them into a mold and they're hollow inside. And, and that was the other thing we were talking about, about tobacco. Air doesn't, you know, move heat through very well. Um, in no gas does. Liquids and solids are much better at transmitting heat than gases are. And uh, if you have a hollow gap, you know, in a bowl around the outer, you know, in the, between the outer outer edge and the inner edge, you know, you're losing a lot of heat that you should be using. I mean, using a solid clay bowl, you know, is going to cut your charcoal uses by 25%, maybe 33%. Okay. What do you think about those standard Egyptian clay bowls that come with most uh, Egyptian They're hookahs? better than the Chinese funnel knockoffs. They're much better. I mean, the, they're much better to moving heat around and uh, getting heat into the tobacco and whatever. And I mean, yeah, they don't have a funnel and the juice is leaking out of the holes in the bottom, but hey, 
you know, in terms of you know, in terms of you know, heat transfer and efficiency, they're they're better than the Chinese funnel bowls that are, you know, they have that hollow gap in them. And for that, for the for the same, for the same on the along the same lines, I mean, I'm not a big fan. No offense, but the you know the mini alien bowls, I mean, they're solid clay. They conduct heat a lot better than the Chinese uh, knockoffs do. They're certainly worth a little, they're certainly worth more money. But it seems like everybody's trying to sell these crummy Chinese bowls for the same price as they're selling other bowls for it. It's it's just crazy. I was going to bring up a point on that. Um, I lost my train of thought. So I'd recommend the Alien Funnel Bowl grudgingly, more so than I would the basic, you know, Arab clay bowl. But really, okay. yeah, well, that's good to know. Yeah, but certainly any of those are better than. Yeah. This is my question. Um, in here in your lounge, you only use Tangier's large funnel bowls. Yeah. Sir. You don't produce that many, and we don't produce any anymore. Don't produce any anymore for a resale. However, your most popular bowls are the mini. The Pico, yeah, which are minute compared to these things. In case anyone can see, I mean, this is a large Tangier's funnel bowl right here, and I don't have anything to compare it to other than my pinky finger, maybe a hose. However, the Pico is really only like an inch and a quarter in diameter. No, it's bigger. Than that. A little bit bigger. Uh, it's about one. It's about one point eight seven five inches. Holds a significantly uh, yeah. less amount of tobacco. Yeah. What do you think of those compared to your larges? For you personally smoking, I mean, obviously you're only using your larges in here. Why are well, you producing the them? Well, you're, you're, well, the thing is, is that a pico bowl. Um, I mean, the geometry, the geometry of it's different. So I mean, it's not going to perform the same. I mean, I can make a bowl that size, that general size, and it's not going to perform the same as a pico bowl would. I mean, everything's in the shape of, you know, in the shape of the bowl and everything else. And, you know, most people aren't going to sit around and smoke 6, 8, 10, 12 hours. They don't have the time. They don't have the interest. Then, you know, maybe they just don't want to smoke that much. Right. Okay. So it's kind of a waste of tobacco. I mean, you know, if you have one of the bigger bowls, I mean, all you're going to end up doing is, what most people do is, you know, well, I'm just going to take the dry layer off the top and put a new layer at the bottom, you know, on, on top, you know, a new fresh layer. But, uh, you know, in terms of that, I mean, you're going to get more smoke out of a large bowl or a medium bowl than you will out of a smaller Pico. So, I mean, that's that's what the end result is. It's like, how much smoke do you want? How much flavor do you want? Um, are, you, are, you willing, are you willing to, yeah, I mean, are you willing to, to dedicate 100 grams of tobacco? You know, you're only going to be smoking True. three I understand hours. that point yeah. about the uh, tobacco conservation. But the... Um, but the smoke quality is very good out of the smaller bowls, too. Oh, yeah. Well, we do try <laughs> really hard to keep them consistent with what, it, what I hope customers would expect out of it. Yeah, I just I don't see a significant difference in a large bowl. I, I get great results out of a small bowl. Oh, well, yeah, small. but we don't, uh, we don't get up to change bowls every hour either. You know, I'll okay. smoke the same bowl six, eight hours. All right. Yeah. And after Fair six enough. or eight hours, you'll definitely see a significant difference. Fair uh, enough. All right. Well, by the way, you know, as a side point, uh, one of the things I've been you know, thinking about a lot, um, if you're as you're packing your, you know, any type of bowl, funnel bowl, mini alien bowl, you know, standard Egyptian clay head, whatever, it's a good idea to mash. You know, if you're packing your tangiers, it's a good idea to mash the tangiers up against the side wall the outer edge of the bowl mm -hmm. so that you minimize those air gaps and get as good a heat conduction as possible. It, I mean, if you're only going to smoke the bowl for an hour, nobody cares. But if you're going to be smoking the bowl, want the bowl to smoke two or three or four or ten hours, then you definitely want to be moving the tobacco up against the side of the bowl because later in the bowl, that's going to be much more important to how well that bowl smokes. So... You know, if you have a good tight squash of tobacco against the outer edge of the bowl, that'll do wonders for improving the longevity of, of the, you know, how the tobacco smokes. All right. Any other topics you want to discuss for this volume? Uh, no. I can't think of anything. We'll come up with something and come right back. Yeah, okay. All right, guys. I'll see you guys in a little bit. 
All right, so I'm back with Eric Hoffman of Tangiers Tobacco, and um, this topic that we're going to discuss this time is uh, kind of industry related. Um, we made a video where he started discussing why Tangiers funnel bowls are better than Chinese bowls, and we discussed ceramics and all that. And then he started going into detail, and I was thinking that he's given out a lot of what you could call trade secrets. I was thinking, is that beneficial to anyone, to him especially? I mean, he's given out almost the formula, and now maybe other people watching this are going to figure out record what's wrong. It, yeah, 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 record it, figure it out, <laughs> use it, and all that. I said, well, what's the benefit of that? Why would you do that? And he said, good. Maybe they'll come up with better products. Yeah. I'm thinking, you know, <laughs> you know, most people like what I think. I wouldn't want anyone to know um, why it's better. Just say, here, it smokes better. See for yourself. What are your thoughts on that, Eric? Well, I don't know. You know, it, I, I guess my general point is is that I guess I guess my general point is is that if if you were an automobile manufacturer and you developed a new and you developed a new tire, why would you want to be the only company selling that tire? Because there's other companies come along, and you know they make a cheaper tire. They may even make improvements to the tire if. You know, if if they know what makes that tire better, and likewise for a bowl, um, you know, hey, somebody might improve on it. I mean, there's all these interesting devices that people come out with, and from my perspective, if somebody wanted to make something that wasn't handmade and they wanted to make something cheaper, um, then that would be great. But you know, at the time, I didn't really think of the possibility that somebody could make a bowl that was clearly inferior. You know, and uh, and you understand, it's not a question of this is a competing product. It doesn't have anything to do with that. You know, obviously I don't make the mini alien funnel bowl, and I think it's certainly a better product. Mm -hmm. Do you want Yeah, sure. <clears throat> uh, obviously it's, it's a better product than the Chinese uh, crap bowls that are out there. Because um, I envision the fact that, well, what would happen is if we made, um, if we made a hollow gap between the walls of the bowl? It never even occurred to me that that could be the case. So my philosophy was is that any funnel bowl that anybody makes is going to be better than an Egyptian clay bowl. And I was wrong. You know, They're, They've clearly come up with ways to make funnel bowls that are inferior to the standard old Egyptian clay head. And I guess, uh, I guess everybody gets to be wrong <laughs> once in a while. Yeah, I, uh, I still wouldn't talk about it too much. Yeah. I mean, to let them continue making what they're making. But my conclusion to what you're saying is that you wanted to do something, by, by discussing it, you're doing something better for the hookah community as a whole, yeah, sure. or the hookah smokers in general, right, right. so Definitely. they don't get crap out there. I'm on, I, on the other hand, would rather no one knows, you know, well, what... everybody knows. Everybody will figure it out. Yeah. <clears throat> they can make it in China, but it would cost the same. I think what they're doing is making bowls that maybe cost a dollar, and they're trying to pump them out for two and three dollars. Um... So it goes along with what you get what you're paying for. But they're not trying to do anything better. But don't teach them how to do anything better. Why would you want to teach them? Well, the, the thing is, is that, you know, the best way the best way to spread something around is to say, wait a minute, I have a secret, don't tell anybody. <laughs> right, and then they'll go after it. <laughs> you know, as long as it has some salacious content, you know. I mean, you say, oh, this is a secret, don't tell anybody. People are going to go running around. And sometimes it's not even, you know, that they just want to spread rumor and gossip. You know, sometimes it's just that you say, oh, this is a secret, I'm keeping secrets. And sometimes it's just to piss, to, just to piss other people off. Oh, you know, if you don't do this, I'll, I'm going to go tell your secrets. It's like, yeah. if you don't have any secrets, it's like, and what? You know. <laughs> yeah. That's what patents are for. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's like, I have a secret, but it's a public secret, you just can't use my secret. And to me, my thought process is is that because of China being where China is, it's 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 practically impossible to just go out and go, oh yes, I have a patent on the funnel bowl, so there's no and they're making them in China. Um, can the you know can customs stop the, the the fake funnel bowls from coming in? Nobody cares. Yeah. You know, nobody cares. There, there's really zero point to it. You know, if I share the information, somebody might come up with something even better, you know. And it might, it you know, so it's not my bowl, so what, you know. 
that's good. That 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 is going to benefit how Tangier smokes. I hope. That's my, that's what I would say. Well, what what if they came up because China produces a lot of tobacco? What if they came up with a hookah tobacco, we haven't seen. Have we seen Chinese hookah tobacco? Well, actually, the funny thing is, is that China is the, the world's largest uh, producer of tobacco, but they are also they also uh, export zero tobacco. China does not export tobacco because they you have such a large tobacco consumption in their country. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Uh, well, they're certainly the largest consumer of tobacco, um, but and and I don't know. I guess they're not the largest producer of tobacco. I think the United States is, but they certainly don't export any of their tobacco. They need it all domestically for their own markets. I think. Hmm. Did you hear that? Uh, this is off topic. Someone brought this up on the forum the other day. They just heard that Nuclear Tobacco was sold to Japan Tobacco. Have you heard of that company? Mm -mm. I, uh, they put up a link to a Wall Street Journal article, but I don't know anything about the Japan Tobacco Company. What is that? Did they change anything? Is it being made in Japan? I doubt it. Maybe it's just a Japanese company that it could be an investment group. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, if you look at like, uh, I mean, I, 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 I love movies and you know DVDs and whatnot. You know, there's you know a couple of these companies like the Criterion Collection and you know Anchor Bay and things like that. They're owned now owned by the same company. And it's part of its uh, Qatari, uh, a Qatari investment group, and uh, an American, uh, you know, an American contractor to, that's from Silmar, you know, uh, and I mean that's that's what it is. I mean it's just a large investment group of people that know right. oh, here here's twenty million dollars invest our money for us, and you know it's like okay, <laughs> yeah, people were um, I don't think. People understand what that means. I mean, they were complaining, saying, "Oh my God, now what's going to happen?" And I, I asked someone about it and said, "Yeah, that happened a long time ago. Nothing's changed." Yeah, yeah. You know, well, that's the thing is, like in you know, in Scotland, you know, like single malt Scotch, the Japanese would come along and bought up a number of single malt Scotch distilleries, and some of their Scotch has changed much for the worse. Some of the Scotch hasn't changed at all, and could be for, the, for good and could be for bad. But uh, you know. <laughs> I mean, hey, you know, countries go out and make money. You know, people within those countries sure. are going to take the money that they're making and, you know, any they're chance going to do something of, else with it. Any chance of anyone offering you any amount of money to buy you out? Besides the, the $35 offer you made me a couple months ago? No, no, that was it. No, $35 is the best bid so far. John's winning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to, I'll up it. Uh, give me a couple of months to get back to you, and I'll up it to, I don't know. 60? If you get Is that the 60, number I need? Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe $60. Right. That's it. <laughs> no, would you consider... I don't think you would. I think it's a stupid question for me to ask, but maybe just for other people. Would you consider selling? I don't know. Depends how big that check is. I, I like zeros. <laughs> as long as there's a number in front of all those zeros. <laughs> right, right. We'll see. It's not my primary concern, you know. I mean, I mean, when any of these sales take place, I'm sure they, you know, some companies would make certain, you know, do, you know, the company selling would make some demands. Sometimes they do, sure. And the company right. buying it would make certain demands, like uh, you know, when hookah when hookah company got bought out, you know, the owner was prohibited from being in the hookah trade for seven years or whatever it is. Sure. Sure. So I mean, it's, it's non-compete disclosure. Yeah, right. I mean, there's any 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 of those things like that. There, you know, a lot of times, whoever sells the company, in a lot of cases, they end up being a consultant to sure. keep the you know for some period of time at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, to give them all the trade secrets. Yeah, yeah. Keep them keep them going in the right track because you know the thing is that if a company's successful, they want to keep. They buy it because it's successful. Sure. You know, right up here, there's that chicken. There's a chicken company that's like three doors up from where we we are, and some company that makes prepackaged salads come along. They give this guy like nine million dollars for this company. They decide in the course of about eighteen months, they decide to run it into the ground. This is this is a complete disaster for them. So they close it down. You know, break their lease, and then the same guy who sold it to him in the first place got the nine million dollars. Says goes to the real estate company and says. You know, I want to. I want to rent this. Uh, rent these spots out. I want to start a chicken, a chicken roasting company again. Right. <laughs> right. So he just made an extra nine million dollars. You know. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a good idea. You know, but there's no brand name associated with that. Well, know? yeah, he sold out just to get 
sell out yeah. for the money. Nine million dollars is a good amount. If you have nine million dollars, I I might be for sale. <laughs> <laughs> Under what conditions, though? See, money or money is one condition. Obviously, yeah. sales price, and yeah. then there's got to be other conditions. Have you been approached to be bought? No, no. Other than my thirty-five dollar bid. Yeah, but aside from that thirty-five dollar, I don't even know if I I don't even know if I took your thirty-five dollar bid seriously. Actually, you didn't cash my <laughs> deposit check, and did you read the proposal? You gave me all one dollar bills, man. That was I, I wasn't going to take that seriously. <laughs> Okay. Um, distribution. How do you get your product out there? Um, we all see it online. What about <laughs> Some of it, yeah. Whatever, whatever's available. You see what uh, it's it's. Uh, we've been trying to increase the amount of sales we're doing to like local uh, smoke shops and, and lounges and stuff, and you know decrease. You know, in terms of the percentage of what we make, decrease the percentage that's going out by internet. And I mean. We're making a lot more tobacco, so there's more tobacco going to the internet retailers, of course, than there was, say, a year ago. But at the same time, you know, we're trying to, you know, trying to increase the local connection to local businesses and trying to, you know, get them on a on a better playing surface so people can just walk into the local store because, you know, local stores are probably going to be much better at you know, local stores are probably be much better at. Uh, Well, you know, direct sales and service. I mean, you know, you have a question, you go in there, you know, you have a question, you know, maybe they can answer it. Maybe they don't have anything to add to the conversation, but at least there's that link to another human being. You know, and, you know, maybe they have a full flavor suggest they say, oh, we really like this flavor. You know, maybe that's helpful to people. Okay. Um, are there any parts of the country that you're trying to target? As far as local shops, uh, I don't, you know, I don't really look at it from a standpoint of you know, somebody calls me up from South Carolina. Nobody's ever called me up from South Carolina. That's a fact. I don't know if they just don't smoke hookah in South Carolina or not. North Carolina, they got hookah smokers. South Carolina, not so much. I mean, laws, yeah. uh, tobacco laws out there by uh, local governments. Yeah, but South Carolina is a very tobacco-friendly state. They don't have any tobacco laws as close as you can get. But, I mean, just in a general sense, I'm just saying that, you know, I look at it, I look at it from the standpoint, I don't, in certain states, I don't particularly have a lot of, you know, interest in selling directly to, you know, I'll sell the internet retailers, and they can deal with, you know, selling to the customers in those, in those areas, like Chicago has some ridiculous taxes on hookah tobacco there, and, you know, buy it from the internet by all means, you know, come on. Right. Uh, and if you live in Chicago, I'm not saying anything bad about the city of Chicago. It's just those hookah tobacco taxes are ridiculous. And I feel bad for you guys out there. All right. Um, what else can we cover? What's your favorite flavor that you make? <laughs> I like duck, but we don't make duck flavor, so I guess that didn't really... Uh, yeah. I mean... Uh, I mean, in terms of fruit flavors, like regular watermelon, I like regular watermelon a lot. And, uh, you know, obviously everybody probably knows that knows anything about me or Tangiers. And I smoke double uh, double apple. Double yeah, apple. great. <laughs> I don't make a double apple flavor either. I'll that's out of that later. That's out of, yeah. yeah that's, no, it's a ca cashmere peach is, is what I smoke on a pretty regular basis. And then I'll throw some cashmere guajava in there and... You know, and, uh, you know, sometimes I'll smoke mint, and now the new absinthe flavor we just brought out, I've been smoking that periodically, too. Cashmere, how'd you come up with that flavor? That's unique to Puka Tobacco. Yeah, some uh, some weird company sent me flavors some time ago, and they had a very couple of very strange flavors in there. I don't know. And it's I was like, good. wow, you know, this is a great flavor. Uh, it's It's very interesting. It's unusual. All right. Um, what is bug powder? Uh, you know, it's that thing you use to kill cockroaches. You know, they're running around. And what is Tangier's <laughs> bug powder? Well, they, we have little extra amounts of tobacco from when we're baking uh, different, you know, whatever different flavors, you know, we're making. 
and uh, any small amount, you know, small amounts that aren't big enough to make into a quarter kilo or a hundred gram bag or something, uh, we throw them into a bucket, and then we take up, take the bucket periodically, stir it up, put it in the bags, and that's if it's, you know, it's a floral flavor, an herbal flavor, or a mint flavor, then it goes into the bucket called bug powder. Mm-hmm. Is that a discon- uh, discontinued flavor? It's not discontinued, but we don't. Since we're making so much tobacco, you know, and we're not, we're having a lot less waste. Uh-huh. So normally, like, if we made like four kilos of this and four kilos of that and four kilos of a different flavor, we'd have a little bit of waste from each one of them. But because you know, instead of that, we're producing sixty or eighty kilos of flavor, it's carrying over. So we're ending up with like extra two fifties. You know, there's enough of it that the extra amounts will make another 250 or even more than that. And so there's still a very small amount of bug powder being made, or Shawsberry for that matter, same principle, but just with fruit, fruit and candy flavors. Um, there's just a much smaller amount that's, uh, you know, being made in proportion to what we're making with other stuff. So, so it could be different every time, the actual Oh, uh, yeah, it's definitely, get. yeah. Okay. Depending on what the demand for flavors are. So, And then also some flavors have more more ex- excess than others. So. Alright, this is a pressing question that everybody right now wants to know. What the hell is that noise in the background? What hell? What? That noise in the background, what the hell I is I can't it? hear anything anymore. Alright. That's I, the ice machine running. The ice machine that comes on. <laughs> we didn't plan ahead for that. So. No, we didn't plan ahead for the ice machine. No. Hopefully the audio still works and people can still hear us. I have moved them, the recording device closer to Eric. That's why you're now looking at a straighter angle of John. Mm. Yeah, the cinematography of this project is terrible. The production values are shit. I, 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 I'm ashamed to be a part of it anymore. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Actually, no. I, I definitely like this. Uh, I want to do more. I want to come up with more questions. Uh, maybe people can ask us uh, on the forum. Uh, you should have asked them this. You should ask them this. So you guys come up with some questions if you get the opportunity. Yeah, to, definitely. Uh, yeah. To. Uh, well, if we get the opportunity to do this again, which I'm sure we will, uh, I'll take your questions into consideration, and uh, hopefully Eric will answer them. Yeah, I don't, you know, basically you could ask me just about anything, and unless it's really, like, you know, overly technical or, you know, stuff that's just like, yeah, I don't know if I want to tell everybody that, because there's certain things about making tobacco I'm not really terribly interested in telling everybody, but... Uh, maybe when John the uh, John's in Vegas, he'll uh, come up to come up to the Tangier Suite in the in the fabulous Riviera Hotel. So <laughs> uh, uh, sure, it's uh, January thirtieth and thirty first, right? Yeah, uh, hopefully January this video will be out uh, before yeah. then. So yeah, hopefully this video will be out before then, and uh, John will come up and uh, maybe he'll uh, have some more questions for me, and we can uh, have an interview up there, and you know, we're smoking hookah in a foreign foreign country which is actually a different state. (laughs) All right, guys. Well, that's it. Thank you very much, Eric. Okay. And we'll talk to you soon.